Hello, Gary Stearman. Time for another update from Prophecy in the News. It's the 24th of July, a Tuesday. And, uh, you know, we are in a period now that's very dark and, and very threatening, particularly when it comes to uh, the view of events that are unfolding in the Middle East. It's fascinating that on the Jewish calendar, there is a period every sun, uh, summer called the dark time. It begins with the fast of the 17th of Tammuz, and it ends with Tisha B'Av, the 9th of Av. It's a three-week period uh, right in the middle of the summer called the dark time. And in, during this time, historically, uh, Israel has suffered her greatest losses. <coughs> the days of uh, the Maccabees, Antiochus IV, Epiphanes took place during the dark time. And then uh, you had the destruction of the first temple, uh, which took place on the 9th of Av, right at the end of the three-week period. At, and then the second temple in 70 AD was destroyed on the 9th of Av. Uh, there have been numbers of Jewish pogroms. Uh, for example, in 1492 in Spain, uh, the uh, declaration coming from the Spanish royal monarchy, uh, an edict <coughs> banning all Jews from Spain took place on the 9th of Av, Tisha B'Av, uh, in our year, 1492. And so we are right in the middle of that period right now, <clears throat> and some pretty dark things are happening. By the way, this year, the, uh, the fast of the 9th of Av would have uh, occurred on a Sabbath. And so in those cases, the Jews push a fast back uh, to the next day, which this year would be the 10th of Av on Sunday, uh, the 29th of July. So that's about five days from now when the fast of Av is, uh, is uh, going to come, ending that dark time. You know, that pretty much coincides with the Olympics uh, that are uh, being opened in Great Britain. And uh, some have said that they're very fearful uh, of another Munich, uh, another uh, act of terrorism at the Olympics this year against the Jews. Barack Obama has warned Hafez Assad of Syria not to make the tragic mistake of using chemical weapons. Uh, we, uh, we continue to have the banter in the Middle East regarding chemical and biological weapons. <clears throat> we have this from the UK Telegraph. Uh, Mr. Assad's beleaguered regime had earlier threatened to use such weapons if Syria faced international military intervention, although it vowed not to turn them over uh, for use against its own civilians. Quote, given the regime's stockpile of chemical weapons, we will continue to make it clear to Assad and those around him that the world is watching, uh, President Obama told an audience of U.S. veterans uh, in Nevada, and that was yesterday. Quote, they will be held accountable by the international community and the United States if they make the tragic mistake of using those weapons. Uh, the headlines coming from Debka today, uh, July 24th, the Defense Ministry's uh, Amos Gilead and Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Benny Gantz administered uh, what were called tranquilizers on uh, t today, Tuesday the 24th, to allay fears of war with Syria with Hezbollah and with Iran. Gillian said that the uh, Assad regime was in full control of Syria's unconventional weapons, while General Gantz indicated that Israel has no plans for attacking Syria. Uh, those were deemed by the editors of the Debka file to be quote unquote tranquilizers because there has been a lot of anxiety in the Middle East. You know, over in Iran, uh, they are being told that they must prepare for the end times. Uh, Iran's supreme leader, <coughs> Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, uh, for the very first time is telling his nation that it must prepare for the war and for the end times as it continues to develop nuclear weapons. State-owned media outlets in Iran uh, were coordinated, and of course they always are because they are nothing but a propaganda machine for the government. In a coordinated effort, they all ran a similar story uh, beginning uh, back on uh, about the middle of the second week in July 
that uh, these are the end of days, that soon the last Islamic Messiah would come. Until now, uh, the Iranian media would mostly quote clerics from seminaries on the issue of the last Messiah to avoid uh, the regime being labeled as quote unquote messianic. Now, they of course have a belief there that the twelfth Imam uh, will return as the savior of Iran. And, but until now, they've been soft peddling it. However, starting maybe a week and a half ago, Ali Khamenei began to say, These are the end times, and we must prepare for the coming of the Messiah. He said, and I quote, the issue of the Imam Mahdi is of utmost importance. Now that the Imam Mahdi is their view of the Messiah. And his reappearance has been clearly stated in our holy religion of Islam. We must study and remind ourselves of the end times and the Imam Mahdi's era. We must prepare the environment for the coming so that the great leader will come. So we have chemical and biological weapons. We have uh, uh, great contests between uh, warring factions in the Middle East. We have Hezbollah uh, moving in the direction of attaining uh, Hafez Assad's, or that is uh, Bashar Assad's weapons of mass destruction. We have the rise of the Islamic Brotherhood in Syria now. And uh, Israel, through it all, is popping a, a few tranquilizers t today. And the uh, Ayatollah Khamenei is saying we must prepare for the coming of the Imam Mahdi. Uh, on this side of the Atlantic, we have great fear of economic collapse. We have fear of war. We have fear of social instability. Uh, you know, there's a lot of anxiety everywhere. And when I was preparing this update for today, I thought about Psalm 112 because it speaks to this so clearly. Praise ye the Lord. Blessed is the man that feareth the Lord, that delighteth greatly in his commandments. His seed shall be mighty upon earth. The generation of the upright shall be blessed. Wealth and riches shall be in his house, and his righteousness endureth forever. Unto the upright man, uh, unto the upright, there ariseth light in the darkness. He's gracious and full of compassion and righteous. A good man showeth favor, lendeth, he will guide his affairs with discretion. Surely he shall not be moved forever. The righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. And this next verse is especially, I think, meaningful in, our, in today's conversation. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings. His heart is fixed, trusting in the Lord. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. He hath dispersed, he hath given to the poor, his righteousness endureth forever, his horn shall be exalted with honor, the wicked shall see it and be grieved. He shall gnash with his teeth and melt away. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Well, that's Psalm 112, 10 verses urging the righteous man not to be afraid of evil tidings. And I think that's a good counterbalance to what we see coming out of the Middle East today, just a, 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 an, an absolute tidal wave of bad tidings on every front. We have the Russians, the Syrians, the Iranians, we have the Jordanians, we have the Saudi Arabians arming, we have armies and navies uh, moving uh, forces into the Middle East, and of course the outcome is obvious. But in the middle of all that, the righteous man shall not be afraid of evil tidings. And I leave you with that today. Have a great day in the Lord. And remember, owing to what we believe about the times, keep looking up. Thank you.